you were born the same year my mother was, so I'm just wondering if that was before. Where was she born? When? Where, where was she oh, born? She was born in Brooklyn. In Brooklyn. Yeah. So she had a chance to go to Manhattan to see. Uh, yeah, see I was the show. wondering about from the Midwest if you ever. The only that. guys I saw were Wheeler and Woolsey. Believe it or not, that's a, a team that's going back. This is in the '30s. Uh -huh. um, see, by the time I was born, vaudeville was just about ready to wind up. It was just about gone. Television came in about 1950 in the Middle West. So you killed Bud. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Very proud of that. I always, you know, I, I didn't know whether I felt sorry or admired those guys. To do nine, six shows a day, which a lot of them did, and you could go all over the country. An interesting thing which would drive me crazy is to be married and expected to do the same act wherever you went, because they wanted you to do the same routine. Boy, I got to change my routine every 20 minutes if I can. I mean, I've, you, you have set routines you do, but God forbid that you bring up the word improvisation. Oh, please, don't do that. And plus it was all live music. I thought... You know, had to have the piano player or, you know... Oh, yeah. I felt that... Um, this is, these are the guys that I miss today. I miss Fields. Groucho was brilliant. Um, I love Laurel and Hardy. I still think they're two of the funniest guys. That, I mean, they're, you knew what was going to happen. I mean, and yet you didn't know. I mean, it was that you, there'd be a, a spider under the cup and please uh, don't touch that. You know where I was stand with, don't touch that. Ollie, because there's a spider under there. What are you kidding, a spider? There's no spider under there. I'm going to lift the cup up and show you that there's no spider there. Yeah. yeah. And that was it. The spider was there. But uh, these guys were fine. I felt that um, I think what is to me is hurt. And again, I, I find myself defending myself. It has nothing to do with my religion or my politics. It has to do with me and my overall moral thing, which I guess is tied in some way. But why you have to be filthy in order to be funny, I disagree with. Because then if we're going to use this kind of language, then we should take every good novel, we should take every, uh, from Dickens to Shakespeare to um, uh, Faulkner to all of them, and just change all the dialogue in the book. Where, where will it end? If this is the only way you can express yourself, you're in trouble. I spent almost three years in the Marines and we didn't talk that way. Not that we're being a hypocrite. I mean, when we got in with women and children, you kind of, you know, any morning you go home to see your mother, dad, would you use all that kind of language? I don't think so. I don't think so. Maybe you do, but all I know, it wasn't a question of wash your mouth out with soap. Get the hell out of the house. I don't want to hear that. Mm. But I, I know you can be funny without being dirty. Well, you just answered one of my questions. I was going to ask you what, how you think the comedians of your time stack up to the, the comedians of today. Well, that's a very, of course, a sensitive answer on my part and question. Uh, I have to be very careful as to make, make a major shot at those guys. I would say this. Um, uh, I'm a good friend of uh, Williams. I worked with him, uh, of Robin. I disagree with his language, and I'm sure he knows that by this time. Uh, uh, he doesn't need that. Uh, and I grew up with um, Lenny Bruce, and he didn't need that. He went to it, but then the drugs play a, an important part in your overall, you know, problem. Um, I find that uh, I miss Johnny Carson because the reason being Johnny Carson listened to you. He was concerned. About, he wouldn't have you on unless he wanted you to deliver. And keep in mind, I certainly kept in mind, though he did, that he was on all year. You were on maybe six shots. So you want those shots to be good, and he wanted you to do and he made you look good. He would come in and talk about improvisation. These other guys don't do that. I don't know why. I think I know why. I think that there's still an insecurity in both Letterman and Leno. 
What are we going to talk about? Johnny would come in, all, all I know, Parr, but certainly Carson, and say, what do you want to talk about? Well, I thought I'd talk about growing up on a farm in Dayton the first seven years. What was it like? Well, Dad was drunk, and we bought, a, 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 we bought this farm, and he was drinking. And he told me to go out and play, and, okay, save it for the air. That was as far as we went. I'd come out through the curtain, here's Johnny Winters. Hey, Johnny, you were born in, uh, in Dayton, and uh, lived on a farm for the first seven years. And then you went on to Springfield and spent the bulk of your life there before you went into service. I grew up in Norfolk, Nebraska. What about this farm thing? What was it like? Well, Dad was signing papers on an old kitchen table, and this guy looked at me like bad news. I was a kid, seven, but go out and play. It was always go out and play. So I went out and played. I came back in after about a half hour. I said, the cows are dead, Dad. And the guy was had gotten the papers. They're not dead. They're resting. Cry. It's, it's summertime. They're tired. Tired? They're dead, Dad. Okay, so they're dead, Mr. Winters. You sold me, Dad. Mm, gasoline. Dead cows. And my dad said, you ever try to milk a dead cow? A kiss. And lying down. So it's a little black humor, you see, but um, that's the thing you do. To, I, I would do with Johnny. Uh, I think these two guys are basically uh, looking and listening for what the overnights are all about. The uh, ranking, you know, where, where are we? Um, it isn't a question of uh, knocking down Leno or uh, Letterman. Uh, there's a lot I just don't understand. I mean, Steve Allen, I love Steve. Steve played piano, and Steve knew humor, and he played with you. And it's very difficult for me to play with these guys. And you end up going back to the green room, getting a basket of fruit, assorted cheeses, two cans of Pepsi, and a picture of Leno when he, in the Ferrari. It's a lot of fun. 